wonderful. You Get your bag packed. Why? We're going on a singles weekend. You said you'd never go on one of those. This one's different. I heard about it down a club. This is Ashbourne Manor. Where they have the horse trials? A superb hotel situated in the heart of the countryside with fine views of the Chilterns. And it's exclusive. Exclusive? Yeah. How did we get in? <laughs> what do you mean, how did we get in? Don't sell yourself short, Clive. You've done that all your life. As a matter of fact, they were glad to have us. Why? They're short of men. <laughs> I mean, who wants to be stuck in the art of the English countryside this time of year? Then why are we going? Because of the women. This is strictly for the professional classes. You know what that means? Female executives, lady barristers, freewheeling career women from the media, all glamorous, gorgeous and pouty. If they're glamorous, why are they single? Because they've devoted all their energies to their careers. They've had no time for romance. And that's where we come in, because not only do we get romance, we get intellectual stimulation and we take care of our financial problems at the same time. I don't know, Malk. I don't want to become a toy boy. <laughs> I think you're too old for that, Clive. I mean, I'm not intellectual. I wouldn't like to think they wanted me just for my body. <laughs> There's no danger of that. And uh, we'll be going there on equal terms. I think the arrival of an antiques dealer and a chiropodist will be more than welcome. An antiques dealer and chiropodist, who are they? We are. Oh, no, no, I'm not starting all that again. It's the only way we could get it. What's the matter? I've seen you cutting your corns. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Mel, look, wouldn't you like to spend an evening with a lady barrister, glamorous and pouting? I'd sooner have. Yeah. A freewheeling career woman for the media. Good. Get packed. Oh, and, um, bring your guitar. My guitar? Yeah. Help to liven things up. Mal, I'm not very good. Not very good. Don't let anyone ever tell you that. You were one of the hornets. <laughs> and we were good. Yeah, but I just strummed. Wilf carried the melody, I just played a few chords. I think you're forgetting your Moon River, Clive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Will you be singing, Mel? Yeah, I might give him a few numbers. Uh, why? What's the matter? Nothing. Yes, sir, is. What is it? Well, do you think you're up to it? After all these years on the market, in all weathers, shouting yourself hoarse, and then there's a smoking... Uh, 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 wait a minute. Are you suggesting my voice isn't what it was? No. It wasn't that good to start with. <laughs> I've filled halls with that voice, Clive. You've emptied a few as well. Clive, you can insult me as much as you like. You can call me any names you can think of, but don't knock my voice. Don't knock a God-given talent. I'm oh, sorry, Malky. It's just, I don't think that the arrival of a singing antiques dealer and a strumming chiropodist will be quite what they are expecting. Never give them what they expect. And there's another reason. What? It's something I noticed about you. You have great difficulty in expressing your emotions, in revealing the tender side of your nature. And that's why you've always done it through your music. I've never thought of it like that, Malky. Play, maestro. And don't let anyone ever tell you you're just a strummer. Oh, I think the scenes must have gone now. Just hope yours haven't, eh? I wish I brought a book. You won't need a book, Pamela. Socially, your feet won't touch the ground this weekend. Are you sure? It says so in the brochure. Socially, your feet won't touch the ground. Let's see, there'll be rambles in the woodland. Uh, hay rides by moonlight, boating on the lake, a visit to the Abbey to see the monks. It's all going to be happening. Well, there's not much happening at the moment. Well, they're all waiting for Jeremy. He'll bring them to life. Why? Is he a faith healer? <laughs> He's the MC. He's hosting the welcoming cocktail party. He'll introduce us to each other. We've already met. To the men. What men? Well, they haven't all arrived yet, but they'll be coming. They're not sending for the monks, are they? <laughs> it's not an easy place to find, Pamela. Yes. It reminds me of one of those plays. What plays? Where everyone meets at a remote country house and then halfway through the evening... Yeah? They all find out they're dead. Oh, shut up! <laughs> the only deaths round here will be due to over-excitement. Well, I could do with some excitement right now. Shall we have a packet of crisps? Certainly not. <laughs> this isn't your average Saturday night crowd. This is a very select group assembled with care. They look as if they've been assembled by Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, I must say the women are a bit of a surprise. They've obviously lied about their ages. How old are we supposed to be? This weekend, early 30s. <laughs> early 30s? I hope those cocktails are strong. That was going to take me for early 30s. I'll have to send out for a veil. <laughs> You'll get away with it, Pam. 
In this light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if this is a good idea, Jackie. You'll thank me when you're out rambling with a Lloyd's underwriter. You're the one who's rambling. What have I got in common with a Lloyd's underwriter? I said we were in banking. Well, it's true. And we have to keep up appearances. You saw those cars in the car park. Oh. Where did you hide the mini? Behind the stables. Good. <laughs> Pam, I think I've cracked it already. Where? At the bar. He looks as though he's dying to meet me. He looks as though he's dying of fright. <laughs> That's nervous excitement. He's tense, Pam. I can see he's tense. He's almost destroyed that beer, Matt. <laughs> he's willing himself to come over. Must admit, he's very good looking. Yeah. What makes you think he's after you? I can sense these things, Pamela. Oh, here's Jeremy. Hello, everyone. <laughs> For those who haven't met me already, I'm Jeremy. <laughs> I'm here to make your stay as comfortable and enjoyable as possible. Uh, we have a full social programme, although the hayride has been cancelled due to a wheel having fallen off the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> but we will visit the Abbey tomorrow as planned, where we will watch the monks preparing their fortified wines and weaving their own habits. Fascinating, isn't that fascinating? And now we'll commence proceedings by serving our very own cocktail, which we have playfully entitled Cupid's dart. <laughs> Though I assure you it's not an aphrodisiac, ladies. Oh, <laughs> priceless! Uh, and I'm sure you'll find this a stimulating weekend. We have people here from most of the professions, and uh, although the ladies are in the majority, uh, we are expecting the arrival of an antique dealer and a chiropodist at any moment. <laughs> How much does a chiropodist make? On a more serious note, we do have a perfectly adequate car park, so would the person who left the old mini at the rear of the stables please remove it immediately as it's <laughs> causing an obstruction. <laughs> Do you mind if I... Sit down. Uh, no, not at all. Can I get you a... Drink? Uh, no, I think I'll wait for the Cupid's dart. Right. <laughs> nice. Place? Yes. <laughs> Must be very... Uh, hundreds of years old, I should think. Bit off the beat. Very hard to find. Have you come far? Yes. <laughs> Where was that? What? Where have you come from? Uh, Manchester. Oh, Manchester, that's interesting. Is it? <laughs> yes. They say it always rains in Manchester, but I expect you're going to tell me that's not true. No. <laughs> Still, they say it's a wonderful city. Um, concert halls, the Halley, Manchester Guardian. They say it's in front of London in some things. At least, that's what I've heard. <laughs> Have you? Yes. Do you mind if no, I... No, of course not. What? <laughs> Sit with you at dinner. Why? I find you easy to talk to. <laughs> oh. I wonder what's happened to the... Shall uh... I see if Oh, the... thank you. Adrian. <laughs> well, you didn't waste much time. What do you mean? I only went to move the car and you're in with both feet. I didn't encourage him, Jackie. Didn't you? I thought you seemed rather animated. I wasn't animated. I was hysterical. I'm not interested in Adrian. Adrian? That's his name. You know his name? I only went out for a couple of minutes. I thought you weren't interested. I'm not. Look, you saw him first, Jackie, and friends don't do that to each other. I only went to move the car, Pam. Don't worry about it. Don't you trust me? Oh, of course. I'm sorry. What's he doing now? Get me a drink. I thought you didn't encourage him. I didn't. He must be a fast talker. Uh, not exactly. He never finishes a sentence. It's like wading through treacle, Jackie. But well, then you're really not interested. Of course not. And you won't mind leaving us alone this evening? Well, I don't know if I can do that, Jackie. Why not? He's sitting with me at dinner. What? <laughs> I don't believe it. I moved that car a couple of feet and you're practically engaged. If 
I haven't been humiliated enough. Sorry, Jackie. I'm very distressed, Pamela. Have a beer, Matt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when you've finished your drinks, perhaps you'd pass through to the dining room. Uh, I'm afraid the dance floor is out of bounds for this evening, a woodworm having been discovered in the joist. <laughs> but uh, I would emphasise... This is essentially a restful weekend for busy, professional people. So I... Jeremy, off, son. I'm Mel. This is Clyde. Uh, uh, sorry we're late, only he had to look at a few feet. <laughs> Never mind. We're here now, and only just in time by the looks of it. Uh, I beg your pardon. I don't want to worry you, Jerry, but this place is dying a death. I've seen more life on a fishmonger's slab. They seem to be enjoying themselves. They're bored, Jerry. I can see you're worried. I'm not worried. Well, of course not. We're here now. We're livening things up. Uh, that... What is that? That... Eh? That is a guitar, Jerry. Play something, Clive. That won't be necessary. We're just going into dinner. Well, maybe later then. And we don't encourage unofficial entertainment. Unofficial entertainment? He's magic, Jerry. He could have been another Eric Clapton till he went into feet. <laughs> Why don't you circulate? Yeah, right. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And what's the matter now? Not a good week, then. We were expecting something glamorous and pouty, not the Brides of Dracula. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find something. Not hopeful, Jerry. Well, what about those two over there? Oh, yeah. He's always had a weakness for blondes. Let's give it a whirl. Hello. I think they're shy, Clive. How would you like to meet a tall, handsome stranger? Why? Do you know one? <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> Whatever way you look at it, this is fate. Is it? Destiny is weaving its web. We are the playthings of the gods, Clive. Are we? What's the matter? You annoyed about something? You planned this, you knew they were coming, and you followed them here. Clive, I was as surprised as you are, but now they're here, I think we should take advantage of it. But Mel, she hates me. All right, she hates you, I don't dispute that. But hate is only one side of the coin, Clive. And do you know what's on the other side? Love. Love? Love is the reverse of hate. If she was indifferent, you'd be in trouble. But she really hates you, Clive. Yeah. See? You're halfway there already. And you love her, don't you? Oh. Go on. Say it. No, I can't. Say it. Shout it. You love us! <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter how much you love someone if they don't love you. It's like playing tennis with yourself. What? No matter how well you serve or volley, if the ball doesn't come back, there is no game. You don't play tennis? No. Does she play tennis? No. Well, is there a court here, then? I don't think so. Well, what are you talking about tennis for? It was just an example. Oh. Did you think of that yourself? Yeah, it came to me when I was on the wards. You haven't been sniffing that chloroform again, have you? No. Well, stop talking about tennis and don't give in so easily. If a thing's worth having in this world, it's worth fighting for. Now, grab your guitar. Why? We're going to serenade them. Bloody hell, Mel, that is ridiculous. No, it's a beautiful night. There's a full moon and their room is just above the terrace. But, Mel, Pam has already met someone. She has met someone who has yet to acquire the power of human speech, Clive. He has yet to finish a sentence. His lips are out of synchronisation. He's no problem. What are we going to sing? You mean, what am I going to sing? Yeah. Well, I had thought of writing a song, especially for the occasion. You? You've never written a song? Everyone has a song in them, Clive. But then I thought, what rhymes with Pam? Jam. <laughs> Precisely. Am. You see what I mean? And spam. All right, all right. <laughs> then I thought, passing strangers. You remember it? Yeah, but it's been a long time now. Yeah, it'll come back to you. It's so right, Clive, because that's what we are now, Clive. Passing strangers. The words could have been written for us. We seem like passing strangers now. Funny how things can change. We were so inseparable and now... You're acting very strange. <laughs> She's not the only one. <laughs> I thought you tuned that. It must be the night air. Yeah. Give me the key. I can't sing that. I have to stand on a chair. Give me the key. <laughs> We go straight in. I want this to have the maximum effect. Two, three, and. We seem like passing strangers now. Yeah. <laughs> Funny how things can change. Things can change. We were so inseparable. So inseparable. Now, wait a minute. Why do you keep interrupting? Well, just behind your back. Just play, will you? Two, three, and. 
We seem like passing strangers now. Funny how things can change. We were so inseparable. Now you're acting very strange. Strange as <laughs> Wait a minute. Aren't you forgetting something? What? Your guitar. Oh, no. Not tonight, Mal. Tonight's the night. I've got a feeling. You said that last night. And look what happened. Do you know what? You give in too easily. You're too easily rebuffed. I've noticed that. Rebuffed? I was drenched. <laughs> Whose fault was that? Who interfered with the arrangement? Who took it upon himself to creep into the limelight? I thought it would make an interesting interpretation. You've been thinking again, haven't you? Well, don't. Leave the thinking to me. And I'm not giving this up until we've given it our best shot. And you know what that is? Moon River. Moon River. I was saving it for an encore. That was a good number, Mel. We never missed with that. And you sang it well. I'll still get cards. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the plan. We enter the bar unobtrusively. With a guitar? But they won't notice. They'll be bored out of their minds after this trip to the Abbey. Let's face it, the monks are having a better time than we are. <laughs> then... You start to play. A silence descends. Why? Because of your sheer professionalism. Aye, this boy can play. Listen to that dexterity. How does he do it with those stubby fingers? <laughs> then, I'll perch on a bar stool, lean back, loosen my tie, and let him have it with both barrels. We'll slay him, Clive. Are you sure? If music be the food of love, play on. Can I get you? No, a... I don't think I'll. You're bored, aren't you? No. Yes. Yes, you are. You're bored. I'm a very boring person. You're not boring. I am boring. That's why I haven't got any friends. Oh, I don't believe that. You must have friends. Everyone has friends. Well, I had one once. There you are. He was boring. Oh. <laughs> but not as boring as I am. Adrian, you're not boring. You're quiet. You're a quiet person. But remember, still waters run deep. I don't. I'm just boring. Adrian, for the last time, you're not boring. And you do have a friend. I'm your friend. And I will have that drink. Right. And you're not boring. I'm not boring. You seem to be spending a lot of time with Adrian. Yeah. What's he like? Boring. <laughs> Not as boring as this weekend. I haven't spoken to a soul. Even the monks ignored me. They're celibate, Jackie. So am I, but not through choice. <laughs> They're all ignoring me. Do you know why? Because I'm the woman with the old mini. There's always Clive. Don't talk to me about Clive. Wandering around all weekend with that guitar, pretending he can play. Perhaps. It's such a show-off. Perhaps he can play it. Clive? He couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. <laughs> been a long time. They wouldn't let me go. You're right. They really went for Moon River. Yeah, there was only one slight snag, Clive. I wasn't singing it. No. Still, Adrian was very good. Good! You call that good? Yes, I told him he could turn professional. Turn professional? He could turn milk with a voice like that, Clive. <laughs> That's not what they thought. I'm not interested in what they thought. They're musical morons. Get packed. We're leaving. No, no, I can't go. Not yet. Why not? I think I've clicked. <laughs> clicked? Who with? Almost everyone. Even Jackie's looking at me differently. What do you mean, looking at you differently? Well, you know. No, I don't know. What do you mean, she's looking at you differently? Cross-eyed, over her glasses, through a telescope? She was impressed with my playing. 
No one's ever been impressed with your playing, Clive, not even your mother. You're just a strummer. <laughs> That's not what Jackie thinks. Where are you going? I've arranged something with Adrian. Oh. And am I included in this arrangement? No, no. Sorry, mate. to bed. Oh, it's late, Jackie. Oh, but there's a full moon. So? Well, I thought we could find Clive and Adrian. I thought you didn't like Clive. <sighs> he was different tonight. I didn't know he could play like that. He was so popular. Do you know what he told me? That he had difficulty expressing his emotions, that he could only do it through his music. <laughs> it was so romantic. And then he said if I refused to see him, he'd never play again. He'd throw his guitar in the lake and jump in after it. That's very romantic. And then he said, if music be the food of love, play on. <laughs> you coming, Pam? Uh, I'll think about it. Well, don't think for too long. They're ever so popular. Going out? Yes. I wouldn't advise it. There's a close harmony group roaming the grounds. They could be dangerous. You didn't enjoy the singing, then? Is that what you call it? I thought he was very good. He couldn't get arrested with a voice like that. Every woman's after him. Well, that lets you out. You're too old to be a groupie. <laughs> groupie? Why don't you stop interfering in my life? You followed me here, didn't you? You followed me everywhere. I see you outside the house, in the bank, at the club. Every time I turn round, there you are. Why? Because I love you. You see? You haven't got an answer. Uh -huh. Well, I'll tell you why. Because you can't bear them. What did you say? I love you. You've never said that before. I didn't know. I thought it was a virus. <laughs> but when I saw him singing to you just now, I... It was only singing, Mark. Excuse me. Dream, dream, dream when I want you in the night when I want you to hold me tight. Hell, fire! <laughs> Controversial views over on Breeze and Sally Jesse in a few moments, but if you want to laugh, stay right here with Plus.